represent part of the PhD work of Paul Hoffman, uh, who already left our institute, but the PhD thesis will be submitted in summer. And uh, the thesis was co-advised by Melanie Todd and myself. And the industrial partner is Mission Elhibel from a competence center, which is uh, directly linked to Infineon Austria. And the work is uh, funded by the Austrian Research Promotion Agency. And it's about, uh, sorry, it's a continuum fatigue damage model, which we have enriched to take into account information from the brain structure. So the motivation, since, since Infineon is the uh, industrial partner, it's about microelectronics. And typically you have a silicon substrate, <coughs> and on top of the silicon substrate there is some uh, metallization film. And this undergoes thermomechanical cycling, uh, and we're interested in the fatigue predictions. So what do we have? We have a Maybe at the end of the presentation I can do this. So we have a coffee mens type fatigue model, which was intentionally based for homogeneous bulk materials. So not for uh, not for grains, but for uh, homogeneous bulk material uh, to predict the behavior of large structures, which has some geometrical features which give stress and strain uh, concentrations. But not for what's going on inside. Uh, the grains and the grain boundaries. On the other hand, uh, we have a test device from which we know the microstructure, which is grain size, uh, misalignment angles and stuff like this. And we have uh, experimental evidence what's going on in this test device. And now we attempt uh, to use information from this microstructure and to put it in, into our homogeneous bulk material model. Uh, to apply our model at a somewhat lower scale and to take into account microstructural features. And the goal is to develop tools for computational tools to predict uh, reliability in microelectronic components <coughs> under uh, power cycling overload process. So, in the beginning, I will talk about the existing model and the experimental evidence we have. I will talk a little bit about the enrichment of our model. Uh, I will have a few words on the mesh and pixel size of, of our experiment and finite element model. And at the end, I will show calibration of the parameters. So, the existing model, what do we have for modeling and simulation? This has been published uh, earlier. It's a, we have a local damage onset, uh, which is based on a fatigue indicator parameter uh, and a fatigue associate law. Then we have a local damage grow, which is based on continuum damage mechanics, locally uh, increasing damage and material degradation. And since this is implemented into a finite element code, uh, we can model crack nucleation, fatigue crack nucleation, and fatigue crack progression in the structure. So what we typically do, we run a thermomechanical analysis uh, representing this overload process. So we start by transient temperature field analysis where we have heat sources and heat, uh, heat conduction and from this we get the temperature field which depends on the location and on the time so it's a pulsating field and this uh, temperature field is the input to an elastoplastic simulation uh, we look for a stabilized cycle in our elastic plastic finite element simulation and from this we can predict the damage progression and since damage progresses, the structure changes, so we have to we have a new structure more or less and we have to go back uh, to the temperature field analysis again and do this again so we can loop through the damage progression. Uh, what do we know from experimental testing? This is uh, from an accompanying project uh, also with Infineon but with our material scientists that's already published. Uh, they considered a test device which was uh, built on purpose, and from this test device under thermomechanical cycling, we know the microstructure, and the misalignment angles, and so on. So, what they recorded in the experiments uh, the damage development during the cycling, uh, the void formation, the growth and coalescence, and finally the crack pattern, the cross section of the copper metallization. 
So these two things should be put together. So we, we want to add information on this experimental evidence to our model. And from initial studies uh, and from this material science study, the relevant features are the triple junction points and the misalignment angles on these points. So what is our, our model? We have a fatigue fatigue indicator parameter uh, combined with a coffee benson type approach. So you see here uh, the fatigue fatigue indicator. And the main driver is the uh, shear strain range. Uh, and this is combined with a critical plane approach. Uh, and then we interpret this as a coffin Manson behavior where you see the number of cycles to failure, the exponent for uh, this, this factor. And what we introduced here is this S of X. Uh, this means at certain positions X, we can reduce the time, or we can reduce the number of cycles until failure sets on. So this is a parameter we can we can play with and see how this works. So this is from a real structure. This is the distribution of the triple point junctions in this in this copper. So from this real structure, we know where at position X, where we have to reduce a little bit or a lot our number of cycles to failure to have. Uh, fatigue damage initiation. So the second information is the misalignment angles uh, taken from EBSD uh, pictures. And you see that there's a certain distribution. And uh, we have a second parameter, which we call R. Uh, and we know from initial studies that the most severe misalignment angle is uh, 35 degrees. And for this, we set our value S to 0.25. We ran some, some studies to, to find some, some magnitudes of these values. Uh, and this function here uh, takes into account how much uh, angles which are not 35 degrees have an influence on this factor S reducing the fatigue initiation. Uh, so we have two parameters. Uh, S of X and this this value uh, R and this is given by this uh, by this function. And this is a an example. You see the the triple point locations and by the by the gray code you see how how we manipulate this value S in more severe locations. It's oops, it's it's dark and in less severe it's light. So. A word on the size of the pixels of the image analysis on the, in our uh, finite element mesh. First, how do we get patterns from experiments? So that's very cumbersome and time consuming. We want to, to record or to, to, to measure the development uh, of the crack pattern over the number of cycles. So we start with the pristine sample and then we go to 200, uh, number of cycles, 200, 1000, and so on. And we do this for seven different number of cycles. And for every uh, of these cases, uh, it's cycled until the number which is desired. Then the colleagues do uh, section in the focus ion beam to get the cross section. We go to electron microscopy, and then these images are binarized, and we find some correct pattern. Uh, typically, the pixel size of the images are much smaller than our finite elements, so we have to, to make this match somehow. And first, we have to coarsen in the information from the image, so to blow up the, the pixels, more or less, which is shown here. So we just go from the uh, pixel size of the image, make it comparable to our finite element. Uh, then we have to do skeletalization, which means we do not want to have three or two uh, pixels in a row, we just take out just one of these, that we have really a sequence of pixels, and at the end, uh, we do a length e estimation, so if the crack runs perpendicular, it's, it's shorter than it runs diagonal, it's a little bit longer. So this is also taken into account, to have a 
more realistic measure of the crack length. Now, then we go to calibration of parameter. But the onset is uh, by this R value, which gives the, the sharpness of this S of X. This can be calibrated by uh, comparison to, to these images. And the second part is the damage evolution. After damage initiation, we have implemented earlier damage evolution law, which is a local continuum damage approach, which is based uh, on the dissipated energy in the stabilized cycle. And here the parameter we want to, to fit, which controls the damage evolution, is this kappa 1. Uh, the other parameter, kappa 2 and L, are taken from uh, previous studies in, in earlier. So we have uh, R uh, and kappa 1 to be fitted or calibrated. <coughs> so the range of these parameters you see here from R is 0 0.5 to 1, and this kappa is 4 to 8 times 10 to the power of minus 7. And we do this calibration by comparing the correct length uh, over the area. And we also do a least square error of the experimental simulation to, to find a good fit. So that's one of the figures from the fit. We have already set R to a value. And you see here different, different curves uh, for this uh, type of one value in the damage evolution. And in addition, you see the, uh, the experimental results. So the thin solid line with the error bar of the experiments. Uh, the development of the great length over area with the applied number of cycles. So and by changing these parameters, we can, we can shift this curve a little bit up and down, and we can, we can shift the location where the curvature is changing left and right. And this is the, the good fit what, what we found. So we can, with our fit, we can we can estimate, we can predict the evolution of break lengths or break density over the number of cycles, uh, fitting, to the, fitting to the experiment. So that's one, one figure uh, from the application. That's the experiment. We have a cross section of the copper, and after that, we have introduced these uh, damage onset points, and after thousands of cycles, you see a certain pattern of voids growing. No crack has formed, maybe a small one here, but it starts to evolve. And our simulation uh, looks like this. We have done it in, in smaller parts, but we ran different, uh, different simulations with different statistical, or with the same statistical descriptor, but a different realization uh, to compare this. And that's the damage evolution after thousand cycle, and if you continue, the damage grows at the great Britain uh, evolves. Okay, so it was about thermomechanical fatigue on the metallization layer of a silicon substrate. We have this uh, experimental test device with this power cycling. We can record the evolution of the microstructure and have images of the great development. This was done by colleagues not in our work. Uh, we have the thermomechanical damage law, which originally was built for homogeneous metals. And this has been enriched by inf information on the microstructure. And we showed you some uh, calibration and finally some comparison. So the, the idea is to get predictive computational tools to support uh, reliability computation in the microelectronics. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Now it's time for some questions. Please. In the experiment, uh, you see something what you call crash. Uh, they occur mainly on triple point crashing. It starts there. Yeah. And, and mainly on, on grain boundary, so what? And do they crash or should crash or should be within grain or, or not? So the the typical location where they start, when mm -hmm. they when they nucleate is on the triple points, yeah, uh, and then they grow and coalesce. I would I would say, if I remember correctly, most of the 
most of the cracks then are along the ring boundary. Yeah. And have you have you inserted a certain parameter H also for the drain boundary? You you have uh, a reduced so to say lifetime for the for the triple point? So yes. Yeah, and, and also a extra drain boundary so or not? The material itself is homogeneous. We do not have in the model. The ah, model okay. only knows a homogeneous material, simple, simple J2 plus density, yeah. and we just put a density, a density of triple points and the density of of starting points of damage nucleation, yeah. which comes from experimental evidence. But that was what I mean. You put also uh, similarly in shared uh, points with a other H -fac, uh, H parameter along lines what are in, in the experiment yes. yeah? we could we we did several initial studies what what is a good way mm -hmm. and at least from the things we tested this was the, the most promising okay. and okay. typically this if you look at the at the dot spots typically they are located at the at the green mm -hmm. okay so, thank you uh, 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 second time for this presentation. Um, and